MYO2 or for our American friends, um, MYO3 STI. That's the two litre turbo engine that was the first of the GD body shape. That's the one with the ugly bug eye headlights or um, you may like it or not, but anyway, I'm not here to debate that. But what I wanted to do is show you quickly in the next five to 10 minutes is now these cars are close to 10 years old is some of the common faults are starting to appear. Uh, variable valve timing, error fault codes that is caused that turns the timing on and off for the camshafts, uh, wear and tear on the exhaust systems, brakes, wheel bearings, lower control arm bushes. So let me quickly show you this car with some close up photos at the same time and that might give you some information on how to look after your STI early model or you may be actually looking to buy one of these cars because they're becoming very affordable now. Remember the two litre engine in this particular model is very tough. It's got the really good fully forged um, pistons whereas the later 2.5s have got the hypertectic semi-forged pistons were known to be a bit of a weakness with uh, ring land failure causing high oil consumption but this engine in this car is incredibly tough. You can crank up some serious boosts if you want to take some risks on this engine and some push outs and big horsepower. Um, that coupled with some other smart modifications will actually make this car very very quick. So I get my cameraman to follow me. Um, we've fitted a brand new MRT exhaust system. I'll show you in a still photo here just in a horrible example of the exhaust that came off this car. Um, we've now fitted an adjustable rear white line sway bar, rear replacement sway bar links. So again, you'll see in this still photo the difference with the replacement sway bar and the plastic links that squish and stretch, um, which are the original ones. If you've got them on your car, chances are they're well past their use-by date. Come around the side, we've fitted the new um, DBA T3 slotted rotors. These are the non-directional rotors now, which have got the improved slot design. Uh, new MRT sports pads. Remember, this particular model's got the ventilated rear uh, discs. Um, come up towards the front. You'll see the MRT exhaust system. It's got the flexible joint in the middle, which you'll see here in a close-up photo to insulate the engine movement from the body movement because the back half of the exhaust system obviously sits and hangs off the body and the front half hangs off the engine and gearbox. Come around the side, we'll get my cameraman to show you here. The, um, this is a rear anti-lift kit. Now if you've got this on your car, chances are it's probably failed by now with the original factory part. The advantage of fitting the white line part if MRT supply, we give you lifetime warranty on the parts, improved front suspension dynamics with the change in cast and the change in anti-lift and of course it'll outlast the original factory Subaru part which is a hydraulic filled bush. Telltale signs on the factory bush that looks like an oil leak coming around the bottom here. It's not from your engine, it's from the bush. Um, what else we've done up here? Steering rack mounts. Um, oh, and we've also done, we'll have to go back a little bit, positive shift kit bush. This is the replacement bush and you can see again in this still photo dramatically improves the shift quality when you're driving the car because all of this is moving on the gearbox cross member by slightly stiffening up that $60 bush you'd be surprised how much more easy it is to change gears. Um, up the front we've done a new front adjustable sway bar and uh, of course new sway bar heavy duty links lower control arm bushes and tie right ends which are part of the roll center kit. Again these parts are a good smart upgrade because they're starting to get a bit tired now and probably need to be replaced from normal wear and tear. By replacing with the white line components you get a new part and a mechanical improvement in the reduction of body roll which obviously makes the car handle better at the same time. And as well around the front here we've fitted the new DBA 5000 T3 slotted rotor. So this has got the aluminium hat to keep the heat out of the wheel bearings because remember this model up until 2005-2006 had the smaller wheel bearings, the same as the WRX, the later model Subaru SDIs with the bigger stud pattern have got the bigger wheel bearings. So if you're doing a lot of track work or driving your car hard, chances are wheel bearings like on this particular model actually had failed. Customer complained about unusual brake noise, turned out to be a completely failed front wheel bearing which had also damaged the hub. If you had picked up on that a little bit earlier, he would have saved himself the cost of replacement cast iron up assembly and only needed to replace the wheel bearing. But getting back to the rotor assembly, keeps the heat out of the wheel bearings, transfers more heat into the wheel, whereas obviously the rotor assembly with the friction surface is insulated from the centre hub assembly which allows for more movement and expansion and contraction when these rotors are at their extreme working conditions. Um, and 
also up underneath and we'll show you in a still photo is the new MRT stainless steel brake lines, new ELF racing brake fluid and obviously some other simple things which we'll show you up top on the engine side of this video update. So obviously we're now at the business end of the upgrades with the engine bay on the O2 Bug Eye SDI and as you can see in these still photos there's a whole range of high pressure 1.3 bar radiator cap, the replacement GFB fully adjustable blow off valve from externally venting to internally venting. By the way you can fit a whistling trumpet on that particular model. Um, also the MRT brake support bracket which reduces the sponginess of the brake pedal and improves your pedal control under heavy braking. Now what you can't see, I can again show you in a still shot, is the replacement STI high performance carbon reinforced Kevlar timing belt. Now if you're really pushing your car hard at the track, which this particular car has been designed to take to the track by the owner, I would encourage you to consider those things. Now when you do fit a timing belt on this particular model, now being well over 10 years old, it's highly recommended that you check cam belt tensioner, all the idlers, cam um, seals, the guides and all those parts. And what we'll do is I can show you in these still photos the different components to check when you're doing the timing belt on the front of your Subaru in addition to replacement oil pump and water pump. Don't just go necessarily replacing them without checking them first because unfortunately a lot of people get sucked into replacing these parts as a so-called kit when obviously they may not be needed to be replaced. It's quite simple to check them but obviously you want to make sure you've got access to the parts when you're actually doing the kit, the belt itself, so you save time in fitting them straight away.